Okay, we return a nice integral from the Berkeley Math Tournament 2024, calculus number seven. We've got the integral from zero to one half, one over square root one minus x times one plus x to the five halves dx. Okay, I know at least two good ways for this. One is gonna be good for the integration, but the simplification of the bounds later on is kind of rough. In the other way, the integration gets a little bit longer, but it helps with the simplification, so it's kind of a trade-off. And so for this one, I'm gonna kind of do the first way and just start with some straightforward methods. I want first, for this, I can actually, for one plus X, I can peel like a one plus X out of it to the one half. And then the other part's gonna be one plus X squared because together these are still five halves multiplied together. But then when you multiply this times this, what's gonna happen is this becomes one minus X squared. So, we get the same integral from zero to one half. So what we're gonna end up with is gonna be dx. For this piece here, for the one half, I can write it as square root one minus x squared. And then we've got this other piece, one plus x, all squared. But then with what we have here, it looks pretty good for just a trig substitution, substituting on x. So if I do x equal to sine of u, let's say, then getting our dx value, take a derivative, we're gonna get dx is cosine u du. And then let's rearrange this for u. Taking the inverse on both sides, we get u equals arc sine of x. So then for the substitution on this, if we first plug in a half, sine at one half is gonna be pi over six, sine at zero is gonna be just a zero. Our dx value is gonna be cosine u du. Then here we get square root one minus sine squared. And then this is just gonna become one plus sine u all squared. But now on one minus sine squared u, this is gonna be the same thing as cosine squared of u. Inside the square root is gonna be absolute value cosine u, but we're in the first quadrant. Everything's gonna be positive. So that's just gonna be cosine u. And so we can just cancel this one with this right here. But then now with this integral right here, I think what we can do on this, we can just do a virus stress substitution in order to handle this sign of u. Okay, now for the virus stress substitution, I have all the formulas we need over here to the right. And if you're not familiar with these formulas, I derived this in previous videos, so I'll provide a link in the description if you wanna check out where this comes from. But we're just gonna apply it as it is, even though it's an unusual substitution where we don't even have this tan half angle right here. But going ahead with it, first let's update our bounds. So if you plug pi over six in here, what you end up with is tan pi over 12. And I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but we'll figure it out in a minute. And then if you plug in zero, you're gonna get zero. And actually, maybe let's just figure it out right now. We can do this with the half angle formula for tangent. So for tan u over two, I can write this as one minus cosine u over sine of u. And so to calculate this, we'll put it back and write it as tan pi over six over two. So this is gonna be our u value right here. So we just plug in to this half angle formula. So we're gonna have one minus cosine pi over six over sine pi over six. Well, cosine of pi over six, that's square root of three over two. And then sine pi over six, that's gonna be one half. Flip it, multiply it in. And what we end up with is gonna be just two minus square root of three. So we can use this value here as our upper bound. Okay, next for our du value, we have this right here, the two in the numerator I'll bring out front. And then what we're left with is gonna be, oh, I got my variables wrong, so this should be dt right here. Sorry about that. So then what we're gonna have is dt for the, I'm gonna leave some space and we'll bring the one plus t squared all the way out here. Then for this, in order to set up cancellation for the one, I'm gonna write one as one plus t squared over one plus t squared just to set this up. And then for sine, we've got this two t one plus t squared. Now in order for the cancellation to be nice, I really want this to be squared because everything here is squared and I wanna multiply this in and cancel. So what I'll do is if I multiply one plus t squared in the numerator and denominator, it's gonna look like this. But then that way, because we've got the same power now, I can just cancel this with this one and this one. So then let's clean it all up and see what we have. The numerator is gonna become one plus t squared dt. Now all this stuff, t squared plus two t plus one, that's the same thing. I can write that as one plus t squared and the whole thing is squared. 
but let's not write it this way. Something squared squared is going to be to the fourth power. So let me write it like that. But then this integral is not that bad. I could actually, we could do it with algebra, but I think it's kind of nice to do it with a u substitution just to clean this up. Because if I do u for one plus t, then we're just going to have u to the fourth and it all becomes power rule. Okay, so we'll set up this substitution here. If I want, and of course the dt value, this is simple. This is going to be dt equal to du. So if I plug in two minus square root of three here, we end up with three minus square root of three. And sorry, I just realized that I'm kind of reusing variables because we used u before, but it just doesn't matter in a definite integral. So we could choose whatever we want. And so I'm reusing u in this case. Okay, so then next plug zero in. So our lower bound becomes one. Then we're gonna have one plus t squared. So square this and we get u squared minus two u plus one du over this thing which just becomes u to the fourth. But now one plus one, that's gonna give us a two right here. Then let me divide the u to the fourth in here in order to get it so we're set up for power rule. Go ahead and integrate. This becomes minus one over u here, plus one over u squared, minus two over three u cubed. And this is all gonna be from one to three minus square root of three. Now the evaluation is a little tricky. One thing I can do, let's get a common denominator on these two. If I multiply in u over u, this becomes u over u squared. So putting these two together, I can write this as one minus u over u squared. Then I think I'll calculate these parts separately. First, so evaluating this at three minus square root of three. And actually, I think to set this up, let me just reverse the sign. So I'm gonna bring the minus on the two, reverse this minus on here, then I can write this as u minus one. Okay, so now plugging in three minus square root of three here, subtracting one, we're gonna have, let's see, it'll be two minus square root of three over, square this thing out, and it's gonna be, like squaring out each part, it's gonna be nine minus six square root of three, squaring the last part, we get plus three. So then simplify two minus square root of three, nine plus three, 12 minus square root of three. But what I can do, if I factor six out of this, what's gonna happen is we get two minus square root of three in the denominator, cancel, cancel, and this thing's one sixth. So the first part, we're gonna have just one sixth here. Now for this part, I really wanna calculate the one over u cubed first. And I think before I do anything, let's see what just one over u is. So for one over u, we just want one over three minus square root of three. I can rationalize it, multiplying in the conjugate. What's gonna happen, we get three plus square root of three. Multiply this out, we get nine minus this thing squared minus three. And so I can write this as one sixth times three plus square root of three. So this was just the one over u value. So for one over u cubed, I just need to cube this thing out. So what we're gonna have is Cubing this, we have one over six cubed. Then I'm gonna break this up. Let's write it, let's square it first, just because it's kind of hard to cube things. So I'll square it and then we'll do it like this later. So then squaring this first, we're gonna have nine plus three plus the middle terms is gonna be six squared to three. And we still have this other part right here. But the nine plus three, that's gonna be a 12. And then for this six cubed, I can break out a six we can write it as six squared times six, then I can use cancel, cancel, make this a two, six and the 12 is two. And so what we have one over six squared, distribute this out, two times three, six, three times square root of three, plus two, square root of three, plus square root of three times square root of three, that's just three. Putting this together, we have five square root of three, plus nine over six squared. So we'll plug this back in up here. But now the easy part, we just need to evaluate one. You plug a one in here, you get a zero. You plug a one in here, you just get two thirds. So for two thirds, let's get it as a common denominator. I'm gonna write that as four over six. And then let's break out the constant terms from the radical terms. So like one six, I'll go out of order. So that goes away. So we have minus four over six. And then this here, this is gonna be plus nine over six squared. And one thing I forgot here is there's this two thirds in front. So let me multiply that in, sorry about that. So then multiplying in the two thirds here, we're gonna have, this is gonna be a two 
and then we're multiplying in a three here. But for nine, let's just break that up. For nine, I'm gonna write it, I'll just write it as three times three, just so we can see that we're canceling three there, and I cancel six with one of these. So this whole mess right here becomes just one over six. And then for this last part here, let's multiply in the two thirds. So we end up with 10 squared to three. We'll leave this like three times six squared. But then all this right here becomes two six minus four six or minus two over six or minus one over three. So we have that part right here. Let me rationalize, let's get this the other way. It actually doesn't match the answer key, but I still wanna do it this way. So that way this is gonna cancel with this. I think I'm matching Wolfram Alpha, but I'm not sure. And so for this part, we have 10, six squared, square root of three. Multiply in the minus two, and we have two thirds minus 20 over, let's do this as 36 now, square root of three. But this fraction can be reduced to five over nine, square root of three. So putting it together for my final solution, we have two thirds minus five over nine, square root of three, and that's it. Okay, so that felt like a lot of work. I think we'll have to try the second method and see if I can do any better because that was a little bit tedious. Maybe it's just the end, I don't know, simplification. I think it all started to go wrong when we got the pi over 12. That introduced all the radicals into the situation. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.